Good afternoon, Salt Lake City. We will get started. Board Chair Pui is on his way, but I will start the meeting so that we can stay on time today. We have a big, a lot of meetings and a lot of things to cover today. So um, we'll begin our, wait, hold on. Welcome to the June 11th, 2024 Redevelopment Agency Board Meeting. Our meetings are public and you are welcome to join us in person, on Zoom, or by watching from the City Council's agenda page. Facebook, YouTube, or SLC TV. We hope you'll continue to join us in whichever manner you feel most comfortable. We begin our meeting with comments to the board. Um, for those listening, we are in RDA meeting right now. Um, I'd like to remind everybody that written comments may be submitted to the RDA offices via mail to PO Box 145476, Salt Lake City, Utah 84114, or emailing council.comments at slcgov.com or by calling our 24-hour phone line at 801-535-7654. Thank you for joining us. Uh, before we start, I'll remind everyone about our rules of decorum, which are in place to ensure our meetings move along well and help everyone feel comfortable sharing their comments. A copy of the full rules are available. Um, if you are here to make general comment today, we are accepting comments in person and online on Zoom. Scott Corpany from our staff will moderate our Zoom and will message you with any questions about your registration. If you do need to speak with staff, select Scott from the list of participants. If you need to, you can also raise your hand on Zoom to indicate that you need something from the staff. Remember the staff is handling many tasks at a time, so please limit messages to technical issues and minimal informational messages. Taylor Hill, another staff member, will be calling the names of those who wish to comment based on the order in which you receive them. If you are on Zoom, please unmute your mic when Taylor calls your name. All right, Taylor, will you, uh, we will now open our general comment period. Please start with our first comment. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We do not have anyone registered for general comments. All right, is there anyone in the room that would like to make a general comment to the RDA board? All right, seeing none, we'll move on in our agenda to section B. Section B is a public hearing. Um, item B1 is a public hearing on the resolution for the RDA budget amendment number four for fiscal year 24 through 23 through 24. Same rules of decorum apply. Um, and before we begin taking comments, Ben Lukey from council staff will give us a short introduction. Go ahead, Ben. The annual budget uses a conservative approach to estimate the amount of property tax revenue that the redevelopment agency will receive. In the spring, the actual amount of property tax revenue is confirmed. This is an annual true up budget amendment where the estimates are adjusted to match the actual amounts. The funding includes $3.7 million going to legal obligations that the agency has. There's $791,000 going to the agency's operations budget you may recall straw polling $415,000 one time in additional funding to create a ballpark redevelopment strategy. And the remaining $3 million is placed into transition holding accounts. And you've addressed how to use those funds as part of the RDA's annual budget for next fiscal year. There's a short follow-up briefing after the public hearing today, if there are any additional follow-up questions, and then for the adoption vote. Thank you. Thank you, Ben. Uh, Taylor, please start with the first comment on item B1. Thank you, Mr. Chair. There is no one registered to speak to this item. All right, I believe we are looking, no. A motion to close the hearing? Just a motion to close the hearing. Then you will consider action at, on item number two on your work session agenda. Got it. Uh, I will look for motion. Mr. Chair, I move that we close the public hearing on this item and uh, to a future agenda item okay. for approval. I have a motion from board member Dugan. Do I have a second? Second. Second, second by board member Young. Any discussion to this motion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. That motion passes five to zero with board members Puy and Petro absent at the time of voting. 
We will now move to section C of our agenda, which is uh, redevelopment agency business. Item C1 is approval of the minutes. I will look for a motion. Mr. Chair, I move that the board approve the meeting minutes of April 6th, 24 and May 14th, 2024. Second. I have a motion from board member Dugan and a second from board member Lopez Chavez. Any discussion to this motion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Motion passes five to zero with board members Puy and Petro not voting. Um, we are on item C2. C2 is a resolution for budget amendment number four for fiscal year 23 through 24. Um, I will look for a motion. Do we need any more introduction, Ben? Uh, I don't have anything additional. Uh, if there are any more questions, now would be the time. Otherwise, you could move to approve as recommended. There are currently no board changes. Okay. Uh, board members, do you have any discussion to this before we call for a motion? All right, I'll look for a motion. Mr. Chair, I move that the board adopt a resolution approving the fiscal year 2025 Sorry. RDA Sorry, that's a motion sheet for later. Oh. The motion um, that's on the agenda right now would just be for um, budget amendment number four. There's not a separate motion sheet for that. Sorry about that confusion. <laughs> Sorry, you're right. So the motion should just be to approve. Yeah, yeah Mr. Chair, I move that we uh, move to approve the RDA budget amendment number four for fiscal year 2023 to 24. Second. Okay, a motion from board member Dugan, a second from board member Young. Is there any discussion to this motion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Passes six to zero with board member Pui absent. We are on to item C3. This is an item related to Northwest Quadrant Tax Increment Reimbursement Agreement follow up. We have Danny Walls, Kate Warrett at the table from RDA staff. Um, and Go ahead when you're ready. Thank you for letting us come back and discuss this with you. I just wanted to make one note after our presentation to you in May, um, the developer advised us that they had omitted a parcel and it has now been included into the proposed term sheet. Um, it was a 3.8 acre parcel that is going to be a dedicated road. So the expenses and the um, that were already included in the term sheet were not changed because they just missed including that and it won't generate any tax increments so no other changes occurred um, I'm, and we are open to any questions you may have or we are happy to go through the presentation a little faster if if that would be helpful could you okay. just check your mic to make sure that that light is green, please? It is Thank you. green, yeah. Thank you. Okay, well, we'll do a really quick recap and stop me if you have any questions. Um, this is the Northwest Quadrant. If you wanna to go to the next slide, please. So as a reminder, um, starting in 2016, we, we um, well, the city, um, created a master plan for this area and has gone through several different processes to um, allow for um, development to occur out here and to encourage it to happen. Uh, there's been some zoning changes. A CRA was established here and along with that CRA that was established, a development agreement was was signed in, in January 2018 and a, poli a tax increment policy specific to this project area was created in 2018 as well. Al along with, within the tax increment policy, they are allowed to request multiple tax increment reimbursement agreements, and they have executed one for their phase one of development, and they are now requesting a tax increment reimbursement policy, or sorry, agreement, for um, phases two and three of their development. So that is what we're here to talk about today. Let's go to the next slide. Um, this is the full project area. This, this shows you what's in that community reinvestment area. It's about 3,300 acres, 1,300 of which it could be considered developable. Let's go to the next slide. 
Next slide. Uh, there we go. Um, so the green is the previously approved phase one um, tax increment reimbursement agreement area, and the red and the blue areas to the west are are phases two and three. Where the red and the blue connect, that's where that parcel is that was accidentally omitted previously. Let's go to the next slide. So it now totals 954 acres. The, um, the tax increment reimbursement policy allows them to receive up to 70% well, of the tax increment that is collected from this project area. There's only the one taxing entity, the, the city, that that is participating. So um, it will just be the city's tax increment that, that would go to them. And the, the maximum reimbursement amount is about $49.56 million. And their eligible expenses, which are mainly roadways, um, and other infrastructure along with um, dealing with development impediments caused by the the bad soil and the the, the pollution in the area um, that that brings us up to a total eligible expenses of just over 288 million dollars um, let's go ahead and go to the next slide so what you can see here is a visualization of what one of their buildings looks like that in, in phase one, the phase two buildings will be very similar looking to this. It will be warehousing, manufacturing, and distribution services. They are proposing that approximately 14.7 million square feet of development will occur, and it will likely bring about 7,300 jobs to the city. This will be done with $1.8 billion of capital expenditures on their side. Let's go ahead and go to the next slide. So just looking at how much tax increment we are, um, a third party um, consultant is projecting that they will um, create. Um, overall, about $94 million will be created with the city retaining for the general fund 23.6 million of that and then 70.8 million of that coming to the RDA. And let's go to the next slide. It'll show the breakdown of that 70.8 million here. So um, according to the development agreement and that tax increment policy that we have, um, they 70% will go to the developer, 10% goes to affordable housing, 10% um, to RDA administration, 10% for shared costs. And you can see the, the breakdown of those amounts there. Let's go to the next slide. And then this just has some of our but for um, reasonings for for why this should happen. Um, all of the requests that they are making are within their right to re their right to request per the development agreement that is in place and the tax increment policy that we have. Um, and with that, that's a pretty light overview. I'm and I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. Any questions? It seems like we don't have any. Yeah. Okay. We need a motion. Or no. Board members, I think the um, RDA staff is looking for action on this item at the meeting. And I'm giving you the head. I'm giving you the heads up. The next item we're gonna have also. Sheets are for now. <laughs> we're also gonna need some action and probably uh, next item. So we're ready <laughs> for it. So I'm gonna try. Here we go. Um, Chair, I would like the board to adopt the resolution that would approve a tax increment reimbursement agreement for the Northwest Quadrant as proposed. Second. This is a perfect motion. Um, <laughs> thank you. Um, and uh, any discussion on this motion? Okay, I have a, I'm gonna call the question. Uh, the motion was by uh, Board Member Young. And the second was, was uh, by Board Member Dugan. Uh, 
Board Member uh, Lopez Chavez. Aye. Uh, Board Member Dugan. Aye. Board Member Mano. Aye. Board Member Warden. Yes. Uh, Board Member Petro. Yes. Board Member Young. Aye. And I'm an aye. This motion passes unanimously. I could have done it easier. Um, and uh, moving on to item number four, uh, resolution amendment to housing development loan funding allocations for the Catherine. Um, we're going to welcome at the table Alison Rowland, policy analyst, Tracy Transinio, RDA project manager, and Marcus Lee, RDA project, project coordinator. And while they're um, getting set up, I'll just say that they're, they are looking for action on this item as well. Thanks. I, I and that, that was <laughs> that was actually the first thing I was going to say. <laughs> but I'll say it again at the end. Um, yes, this is a proposed amendment to an allocation of $1.1 million to a project called the Catherine, phases one and two. And this was approved by the board in the NOFA competition for HDLP funds just a couple months ago. The project was originally awarded a low interest loan for $1 million from dormant federal housing program income and about $134,000 from the RDA budget. The project would provide 372 rental units ranging from studios to three bedroom apartments at 41 to 60% AMI. The developer, 22 Communities, was recently informed that they did not receive the 4% federal LIHTC credits, which would have made the project viable. So they have been working with RDA staff to find an alternative. I will leave the more detailed discussion of the, of the proposed amendments to Tracy and Marcus, um, but we'll mention that the RDA Finance Committee reviewed and unanimously recommended this request. And yes, um, they are looking for action today to approve the funding allocation and amend the preliminary terms of this agreement. So please. Great, thank you, Allison. Next slide, please. And I think Allison covered a lot of the background, so I'll go through this pretty quickly. So as Allison mentioned, it's the Catherine phase one and phase two by, developed by 22 communities. Um, it went through the competitive process. Through that process, the RDA board allocated $15 million to 13 of the 15 projects, and both of these projects ranked 10 out of 15. Um, and again, this is a breakdown of the $1 million in home funds and $134,000 in RDA funds. Next slide. And Allison covered these with the breakdown of the units, 100% affordable between 41 and 60% AMI. It'll have a mix of studio one, two, and three bedroom units. And um, as Allison stated, due to the lack of bond cap at the last um, last PAB, more, PAB meeting, um, which is needed in order for them to secure their 4% tax credits, um, they were unable to do that, so they are seeking to restructure the loan into an acquisition loan. Next slide. So before you today, there are two amendments to this proposed loan. Um, one is to amend the loan type for each phase to an acquisition loan that may convert to a construction to permanent loan within two years. And the second is to allow for a conditional waiver of affordable deed restriction that would allow the removal of the 30-year deed restricting by requiring the developer to pay an above market interest rate if the project cannot secure tax credits, financing, and meet other conditions required to close on, on the construction of permanent loan within two years. Next slide. I'll turn it over to Marcus and he'll do a breakdown of the approved terms versus the proposed terms. So on this chart on the left side, you can see the terms that were previously approved um, as part of the um, housing development loan policy. The amounts are remaining the same. So there would be $1 million in HUD home funds with $134,323 in RDA funds. Um, <clears throat> as highlighted, the uh, change here would be from a construction to permanent loan to considering an acquisition loan. Um, as noted in the chart, acquisition loans have a slightly different interest rate than um, the construction to perm loan that was previously approved. So the acquisition loan would have a 1% interest rate um, due to meeting various project priorities. Um, and we 
would have a uh, term, sorry, a term of two years for the acquisition loan. Um, if it were to convert to a construction to permanent loan, it would have a 16 year um, term with a 40 year amortization. And the um, major difference here would be if the developer is unable to uh, secure the tax credits and financing for this project within 24 months and they cannot fulfill their affordable housing obligation, uh, the developer could request the removal of the deed restriction on the property. Um, this removal of the deed restriction would require the loan to be paid in full um, with an increased interest rate. So rather than the 1% interest rate, it would be um, the two-year treasury yield plus 8%. Uh, the current two-year yield is 4.8%, so there would be a very high um, penalty should the deed restriction be waived. <clears throat> Next slide, please. So some considerations um, for you today. The housing development loan policy does allow for acquisition loans, and the uh, loan to value ratio is 78%, so well below the 90% threshold as outlined in the policy. And the developer has taken um, other steps to maximize other lending sources, so there will be a uh, larger loan from a senior lender. Uh, this amendment will help with the project's ability to acquire the property and the RDA has taken steps to ensure that developer will not be incentivized to flip the property. Um, so with the increased interest rate, um, we're using that to ensure that the project is uh, brought to fruition or that the RDA and the city receives <clears throat> a higher uh, payment should the deed waiver be, or the deed restriction be waived. And if approved, uh, the developer will purchase the property at the end of this month. So these funds will help them acquire the property. Uh, next slide, please. So we uh, took this amendment before the RDA Finance Committee and they have recommended that the board approve the loan amendments with the requirement that phase one, so the $1 million in home HUD funds, um, and ensure that those home requirements and regulations are met prior to closing. And I believe that's the end of the presentation. Yeah. And with that, we're happy to answer any questions. Do we have any questions? Board Member Petro? I'm generally supportive of this. Just want to Just want to remind everyone. This is an, in another example of the concentrating of affordable and deeply affordable in one area. We have the opportunity potentially to redraw this RDA area pending the MLB. Um, so I'm going to continue advocating for either the HTRZ with an innovative application at 1950 West North Temple to make sure that this doesn't become a food desert any worse than it is and that economic development can happen here in conjunction with these income levels or if we do redraw the RDA area and it's possible to extend it all the way to 215 instead of just to Redwood Road, that would also be another way that we could help address. Just wanting to draw attention to that since I have the moment. Any other thoughts? I have, go ahead. Thanks, I have, thanks Mr. Chair. I have some questions that are more general than specific to this project. Um, and if you don't have answers, that's okay, but I'm just, um, I'm wondering, do we expect, do, like, for the rest of our NOFA projects, do we expect that others will have not gotten their 4% tax credits, or did the rest of our NOFA funding, uh, was, were they successful at their asks? That's a good question. I'd have to look a little more. I think... Um, Take an answer after. Yeah. That's fine. Mm -hmm. um, I, I guess, um, you know, I've been thinking about this since I found out about the this project, and I'm supportive of the amendments to it. I, I would like the project to move forward regardless of the situation with LIHTC credits and the 4% 4 4 credits having become more uh, competitive. But I, I guess um, I, I'd love some thoughts from RDA staff on what that means for the other projects that we have and for our upcoming NOFA if we need to reconsider the way that we're prioritizing funding 
with um, more projects because market rate projects are harder to, to make pencil right now with interest rates, more projects going to um, uh, using affordable tax credits and those becoming more competitive. That I, I, I've heard a little bit from RDA staff before, but I'd love any more information on that and just some forward thinking about as we prepare for the next year's NOFA um, and other projects that will be coming through, what do we need to do to be uh, proactive about the market conditions rather than just reactive mm -hmm. to those things? Um, and if we need to re reconsider some of the uh, priorities that we created that we did previously in the year and, and things like that, because that it worries me that we're uh, it's it's been common for years for us to see projects that we're expecting to get 9% credits take a long time to get those. But I, I, I don't remember any other projects not being successful at getting 4% credit. So that's where um, just, it seems like it's a signal that whatever canary in a coal mine for, for what might be coming. And I'd love for us to, to think through that a little bit more forward thinking. And, um, and it might be that we want to focus some of our NOFA funds on some of the other priorities that we've been, we've been talking about as a board, like the ADU program or, or different programs where it's, it's rather than focusing on these larger projects that are just having a harder time and more competitive right now, maybe we look at doing some of the missing middle or infill projects with some of those dollars because we want those dollars out. I, I, I want those dollars out on the street as quickly as possible in order to make the biggest impact in housing. And if right now those bigger projects are having a hard time getting off the ground, maybe it's, it's time for us to spend a few years focusing on smaller infill things. And um, with a lot of the, 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 ordinances we've changed on the city council side of of our, the city it seems like maybe this is a good time for rda to to look at that if we're going to have more projects that are that are like this so less of a question about this specific thing but i do think that this project brings up those questions for me that's all thanks i uh if that's all we need a motion mr chair mm -hmm. um i would like to make a motion that the board approve or pardon me adopt the resolution that would amend the recent housing development loan program loan to the Catherine um, with the requirement that the phase one HUD home requirements and regulations are met prior to closing second I have a motion by board member uh, young and a second by board member Dugan deja vu um, any discussion on this motion? Okay, I'm gonna call the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? This motion carries unanimously. Um, moving on, thank you. Moving on to um, item number five. Uh, there is no action needed, uh, so just so you know. Uh, resolution, U.S. climbing property disposition at approximately 310 South 500 West. At the table, Danny Waltz, back again. Carol Lindsay, uh, RDA Deputy Director. Ashley Ogden, Senior, Senior RDA Project Manager. Welcome. Hi, thank you. Sorry, one second. While wow, Ashley is queuing that up, Mr. Chair, I just want to say that um, both Kara and I are thrilled that Ashley's here. She dodged the bullet this morning of having to serve on jury duty. Oh, literally 10 minutes before the meeting, we got the good news that you don't have to hear from us. You get to hear from Ashley instead. So yeah, happy to be here. Um, yeah, thanks so much uh, for um, allowing us to be here to discuss the potential for USA climbing to uh, locate their operations in the Rio Grande district. Um, looks like they just walked in. Um, so with this item, the RDA is requesting that the board, um, oh, sorry, next slide, please. Uh, with this item, the RDA is uh, requesting that the RDA board consider the proposed ground lease terms contained in the packet, which would facilitate the construction of USA Climbing's headquarters and national training facility in the Rio Grande District. Um, if the resolution is approved, uh, the RDA and USA Climbing will enter into an exclusive no negotiation agreement to memorialize um, both parties' commitments until the final ground lease and development agreements can be executed. Next slide. 
So just a little bit about USA Climbing. Um, they are the national governing body for the sport of competition climbing in the US. And they promote the disciplines of bouldering, lead, speed climbing, as well as collegiate and paraclimbing series. Um, they relocated to Salt Lake City from Boulder, Colorado in 2018. Um, and soon announced their intentions to establish a national training center where athletes could receive specialized training to compete at the highest levels internationally. And since that time, the organization has been operating out of Granary District buildings um, slated for redevelopment, while also searching for a site where they can build permanent facilities. Um, during the 2023 session, the legislature appropriated $15 million to support the development of that project. And shortly thereafter, USA Climbing and the RDA um, we're connected to explore opportunities for the project to be located um, on any RDA owned property, and we eventually homed in on um, the Rio Grande District. Next slide. So uh, we don't want to speak for USA Climbing, and I just saw them walk in if uh, you have any questions for them, but this is um, a list of their stated project priorities. So they aim to provide competitive athletes with the trained spaces and support they need to achieve their best, host large-scale climbing events um, with spectator counts up to 1,500 people indoors and 5,000 outdoors, serve as a resource to provide indoor climbing access to the entire community, including underserved populations, um, serve as the headquarters for the organization, and provide true accessibility for all as um, a principal aspect of the design. Next slide. So last September, uh, when we presented the in-progress vision and implementation plan for the dist Rio Grande District, one of the things we heard that was that the project um, needs an exciting catalyst to really set things off. And we feel that this project can be just that. Um, Long-term, the project would bring awareness to Salt Lake as a world-class climbing destination. It would lend the Rio Grande District an identity that aligns with the natural and cultural context of Salt Lake City, help activate the district during off-peak hours, um, and through the multi-day events that they plan to host each year. And in the more immediate time frame, this is an opportunity to have something tangible happening while we work to finalize the district plan and market our other sites. Um, it's also an exciting use that could help attract other developers and tenants, and it may spur adjacent landowners to start making plans for their properties, um, which are largely vacant right now. Next slide. So the development project involves the construction of a USA Climbing Headquarters and National Training Center on the southwest corner of 500 West and 300 South. Um, it's anticipated to include three primary components. Um, a new uh, primary structure that's 65 to 75 feet tall with a 45,000 square foot footprint. Um, this building will include various types of climbing walls as well as other support uses typical of a climbing gym. Most areas will be accessible by the community, but some will be reserved for the national team's exclusive use. Uh, the second piece involves the adaptive reuse of the Salt Lake Mattress Company building, which the RDA owns, um, and that's anticipated to include public-facing food, beverage, and retail, as well as space for USA Climbing's private offices. Um, and they'd also like to build a plaza on the corner of the site that could be utilized for competitions and um, thus is designed to hold 3,500 to 5,000 spectators and adjacent building facades on the exterior um, would have climbing walls that could be used for general training or for competitions um, with secure access controls to allow the public to view um, the climbing but um, not actually get on the walls. <clears throat> and I did wanna note the design is preliminary um, if this ground lease, uh, if the ground lease terms are approved, USA Climbing would further refine their plans and work through um, the proper permitting process. Next slide. So this slide shows the approximate lease area, which would include building footprints and setback areas between the buildings and adjacent right of ways. Um, everything highlighted here in blue would be leased. Uh, everything highlighted in blue and green would be leased to USA Climbing, but they have requested that the outdoor plaza area is leased at no cost, so the RDA would only collect lease revenues from the blue area. Next slide. So we'll get into um, how we calculated the ground lease rate. Um, the annual lease rate would be calculated by multiplying the fee simple fair market value of the lease area by 5%. Um, and that 5% represents the opportunity cost of the ground lease um, or the revenue that could be made if we took $7.3 million um, and invested it in 30-year treasury bonds. Um, so based on a September 2023 land value, this would equal to an annual lease rate of about $365,000 a year. 
and that lease rate would be escalated every five years based on the previous five-year average consumer price index. Um, and to provide some predictability, we've negotiated a floor of 2% escalation and a ceiling of 5%. Next slide. And USA Climbing has requested a lease abatement or a reduction. Um, the draft term sheet outlines the following schedule. So in years one through six, during construction and stabilization, no lease payments would be made. Um, in year seven, the organization would pay 45% of the escalated annual lease rate, which would increase by 5% each year until year 10. Um, the lease payment would equal 60% of the escalated annual lease rate from that point forward. Um, and the calculation at the bottom is just an example of what the lease rate uh, um, could look like in year 10. So USA Climbing would pay 60% of that annual lease rate um, continue, that would continue to escalate every five years based on consumer price index. <clears throat> Next slide. The RDA is planning to collect uh, common area maintenance fees or CAM fees from all property lessees in Rio Grande District um, to be used to fund the maintenance of publicly owned improvements that we're constructing. Um, so we've determined that a market-based CAM fee would be about a dollar um, and 50 cents per square foot of gross floor area. So for USA Climbing, we're proposing to tie that fee to the same escalation and abatement schedules that the lease, lease rate would follow. Next slide. And so I tried to put all this stuff together on one slide. So um, some associated budget impacts. Um, this table summarizes other negotiated areas of RDA financial participation in the project, as well as a few outside costs. So the most significant contribution would be to help fund the adaptive reuse of the Salt Lake mattress building. Um, maintaining and activating that building is uh, something that the RDA has a vested interest in. If an end user wasn't secured soon, um, we would likely need to pivot to completing the rehab work um, ourselves or risk losing that structure. Um, so the, the project also includes an outdoor plaza, which should be used um, for the events and also be made available for use by the public. Um, and the RDA is proposing to contribute $1 million to plaza construction. Um, and as the landowner, we're proposing to cover certain site preparation costs related to demolition of the existing structure on the site, as well as some minor remediation work that'll need to be done. Um, so altogether, that totals to $7.32 million in proposed direct RDA contribution um, to the project. And as for the outside costs, um, the first item involves relocation of state employees who work out of the warehouse that's currently on the site. So when the RDA purchased this property in 2022 from the state, um, we agreed to lease the building back to them in, um, until their current tenants could move into the new, their new home that's currently under construction up at the Capitol. Um, so their lease agreement provides an option for the RDA to relocate the employees sooner if we want to redevelop the property um, before their planned move happens. And uh, right now, I think the most current estimate is fall 2026 for them to move um, without RDA intervention. So the value shown here reflects um, a conservative cost estimate for moving and lease expenses for the state. And finally, the shared parking structure. So that's a part of the larger Rio Grande um, district vision plan um, that includes, you know, the development of the shared parking structure that could be used by multiple South Block tenants. Um, we're exploring the feasibility of financing, developing, and owning um, that parking structure ourselves, and USA Climbing would be the first parking less E if we were to do so. Um, and the term sheet indicates USA Climbing can park on adjacent RDA-owned property until the structure is built or until an alternative solution is found. Next slide, please. <clears throat> um, so in addition to the other project benefits already discussed related to activation, uh, this slide highlights additional benefits uh, that we're proposing to tie the to the requested lease abatement. So said another way, if you know these items as a baseline um, weren't, aren't provided, the RDA would be able to adjust the lease rate accordingly. Um, so some of these benefits are improvements that can be memorialized in construction drawings or in the development agreement, but some are programmatic and ongoing in nature. Um, we propose to track that through a five-year community benefits plan with um, regular progress reports made to the RDA board. Um, specific items will be solidified through the ground lease agreement when um, we negotiate that final document, but some initial ideas that have been brought up um, are youth programming through partnerships with K through 12 schools, 
um, workforce development opportunities, um, efforts to expose non-traditional community members to the sport based on income or other key measures, and TDM strategies um, to reduce auto dependency and to encourage the use of alternative modes of transportation when traveling to and from the facility. Um, next slide. And this is the, the last slide we have. So um, next steps, again, an overview. If, um, if this term sheet were approved by the RDA board, we would um, execute an ENA to memorialize our commitments. Um, USA Climbing would refine the design of their project and launch a capital funding campaign to support construction costs. Um, we'd coordinate on design and construction of those district-wide public improvements that are part of the larger district plan. And finally, when all conditions have been met, we will uh, execute a ground lease and development agreements. That's all I have. Happy to take any questions. Um, can you define a CAM for me? I actually am not familiar with that. CAM? Mm -hmm. uh, the common area maintenance fee, um, I, it's, I guess, a, a typically assessed in different ways in different projects. I think it's often, um, you know, when there's multi, multiple tenants in one building, kind of assessed to cover. Um, it's like an HOA. Taking care of all those common spaces. Like an HOA. Yeah. <laughs> it's like an HOA in terms that you pay for shared uses, but it's not like an HOA in terms that it doesn't give you any rights to choose how to change things. So if you're a tenant in a commercial building, you end up having to pay the CAMs. Um, just to help pay for the lights and the water in the bathroom and things like, things like that. But okay. it, it depends on, it, it's a general term. And it also pays for the uh, maintenance for the out there plaza too, the whole square footage of the, not just the building, but the outside too. Correct? Uh, if I'm understanding you, yeah, the, um, the intent is to use those funds to, um, put towards maintenance of all the public improvements, and that would include um, the USA Climbing Plaza. Does that answer your question? Do you have any other questions related to that? I, you know, to, I think it, it's an interesting concept to, to try to maintain the, the cost associated of the common areas. How do you end it up with that dollar and 50 cent calculation per square footage, uh, and is that, uh, adjustable over time because I'm sure you know the cost of maintaining a public space will rise up over time yeah so um, I believe we found that rate just by kind of investigating other projects that are trying to maintain similar types of improvements um, and that's a number about an average that we found um, uh, and then we are proposing to tie that to the same um, escalation schedule and also abatement schedule as the lease. So that would, um, that camp fee would escalate over time. Could, could the term agreement uh, leave the door open for renegotiation in case that, you know, there is a significant uh, cost overruns? Um, you know, not, not to break, break their back on cost, but at the same time, uh, in, in many cases, the city ends up, you know, in a place where we're like, we have to subsidize, subsidize uh, increased cost and that we didn't calculate it originally. And I don't want us to tie ourselves too, too hard to that in case we missed it. Um, Board Member Young. Yes, so um, to be clear, like, I love the idea and I love the concept. One thing that I would love us collectively to um, be thinking about is related to, we are going to be building a, clearly a very tall building to accommodate the climbing component. Um, and we are currently trying to undo the compartmentalization of an area downtown while at the same time in the Rio Grande kind of constructing what will be some very high walls. And I just, whatever attention we can pay to activation 360 degrees in looking at the plan, there's an intent ultimately to have residential on the other side of that. And so just being thoughtful about how we look at the block collectively mm -hmm. to make sure that we're not constructing walls that ultimately then lead to what we're trying to undo in other areas. Any other thoughts? It's 
When I ran for the seat, I did not think professional sports would play this large a role in my regular deliberations. Same. I'm not, not complaining, just as a music person, completely surprised. Um, the, the question related to one of the points you made um, about them, if, if there's agreement uh, on this body on moving forward, um, and uh, the U.S. climbing, uh, you know, group starting a, national, a capital campaign to start fund or, or try to. How long do they have an estimate? Because I don't want. I mean, everybody is anxious to see something happening in this area, and I um, and I would love to see something happen in this area. I would love to. Uh, also figure out if something is not happening, uh, if there is some, some uh, recall or negotiations that we can put on this, because it will be very frustrating for everybody, uh, certainly the community, uh, to get their hopes up um, and then, you know, sitting on the land for years to come. Mr. Chair. Yes. Could I add to your, your comment or question? I, I think you probably already talked about this, but if you could reiterate a little bit, what happens in the event that the project is not successful, both during construction, during development fundraising, or even once constructed and operating, if, if for some reason the business model is not, not effective and, and they can't maintain this uh, facility, what happens to the property? Yeah, I, if my memory is correct, I know this is addressed in the term sheet. Um, I believe that we have specified that um, USA Climbing uh, must be the owner or tenant of those improvements. Um, otherwise, I think, they, I think we left the door open for them to seek our permission to reassign um, the improvements to another entity, um, but that would require our sign off on that. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I think as the landowner recourse would probably involve the RDA having the ability to take over the improvements as well. Yeah, we should note this is a ground lease, so nothing will happen to the land in terms of we will continue to own it. As Ashley said, we will have recourse throughout the agreement in terms of the status of the project and what, what their recourse would be depending on where they're at in the process. If they either need more time to build it, if it completely doesn't happen, how do we take that back and or to what level we could approve any assignment or different use for the, the property? All of that would be within our control and laid out within the agreement. Can we, uh, maybe now's not the right time, but maybe uh, I can have a small group meeting or something with, with uh, RDA or, or attorney's office to understand what those terms actually look like and what are the triggers and at what point we can pull what levers in order to regain control of the land in the, in the case of default on whatever term of the contract it may be. Yeah, we, we can certainly lay that out in terms of the when those triggers happen. But yeah, just again, it's whether we terminate the ground lease, whether we file breach of contract, whether we essentially um, increase the lease rate, seek damages, all of that will be dependent on what that actual breach of contract would be. But we'd be happy to pull in the attorneys and have that detailed discussion as it relates to the specific agreement. Yeah, I think for me, it's um, the... I, I mean, I'm in agreement with the rest of the board and I think staff about the excitement of having something happen in Station Center. We've been wanting that, sorry, what are we calling it now? Rio Grande, at the Rio Grande. Um, uh, so certainly I've been anxious to have a development there for a very long time. This one is, um, it, I think it has potential to be exciting and, and really invigorate the neighborhood like we hope it is. Uh, but just given that it's a, you know, a nonprofit, who knows what happens? It's a private organization. I think in the 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 event of the project not being successful, I'd be really nervous. Where I mean, we 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 have contracts with a lot of other nonprofits for um, land, bicycle collectives, spy hop, things like that. Those are also important parcels but smaller than this and and perhaps on less key central nights an important place but like this is a really key property in our city so i just want to make sure that we maintain the ability to control the land and if something were to go wrong or even if the yeah. business model works but it actually does create a wall like board member young was saying or it 
it ends up not having the community benefits that we want. Like maybe they're able to pay their lease and, and the, the building is able to keep the lights on, but it's just nobody's coming or something like that. I would be really interested in what our remedies are because, because the, um, the problems of failure on this site is, is much bigger than a lot of other pro properties. So I would not want that to become a, a hole within that community. On the mattress company building, I've always kind of been proud and shocked at how much effort was put into preserving this building. Um, I probably need to do a little more research into the history and why we've gone to such great lengths to preserve it. But are there historical tax credits that will come into play for that? And if so, have we collected them as a city for stabilization or will that go as a part of the lease for rehabbing? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I think, uh, you know, the RDA, we don't, uh, we're tax exempt, so we wouldn't ben directly benefit from those tax credits, but um, we could potentially syndicate them or, or find a buyer for those tax credits. Um, that's a great question and something that we will look into more. Um, and then my second thing, when we talk about um, the guiding principles or the project goals, uh, it says that they want to provide true accessibility for all as a principal aspect of design. Since we've said that's as an as aspect of design, should we be expecting like true, I'm, I'm assuming that any Olympic training facility, and this is probably better for people who are not RDA, <laughs> I'm assuming a, a true Olympic training center is also Paralympic. So are we potentially expecting like actual universal design for ADA accessibility with this? Yeah, I, I assume the answer was yes. Mark shaking his head, yes. Um, that is they do ridiculously have, uh, exciting to me. <laughs> athletes. I don't believe that's a recognized Olympic category yet, para climbing. Okay. But um, they are. They do have para athletes, and absolutely want to serve them. Yeah. I do love that as we break the seal on this area, and you know how we're going to open it up to everyone. That universal design would be the precedent. I think that's a remarkable signal. I, uh, is there anybody else? Um, I would like to know quickly if there is, a, and this is my last comment, uh, mm -hmm. the, the, is uh, the lease agreement allowed for any other, does the lease agreement allow for any other uses, um, but, but a standalone building related to um, the training facilities, or could they leverage other uh, plans and do some some mixed use, uh, even housing on it. I, you know, we all know how how much needed it is and how much growth pressures we have in our city. So I want to know if it would allow some creative uses of this land. Um, do you mean in the future or like at this time? I mean, you know, if it, it, it's the agreement only for them building a training facility with nothing else, or could they? come up with a plan that allows for all their uses to, while well, fulfilling that one. Yeah, the Salt Lake Mattress Building, um, I, this isn't exactly what you're asking for, but the Salt Lake Mattress Building um, is, they, it, they do have plans to make that a publicly accessible building with you know retail and um, food and beverage. Um, I think if we wanted to explore uh, changing the project significantly, that's something we'd have to go Discuss with them. So I, I so the, for the purpose of our agreement, it will narrow it down to that one single use, and they will come up with, with a plan. Okay, I understand. Um, okay, is there any anybody else? Okay, thank you for the update. Um, <laughs> and you. when are we expecting to um, to see the terms, and when are we expected to uh, take action on this? So the draft term sheet is um, in the packet, and we will um, we can retransmit for next month. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to item number six, uh, the RDA budget for fiscal year 2024, 2025. And this is a follow up conversation. Do we have any uh, discussions on this item? Mr. Chair, this was just listed on the agenda in case uh, board members had any follow up questions. Otherwise, um, I wanted to draw your attention to the motion sheet. This will be 
um, at your formal meeting tonight. You will convene as the RDA board at your seven o'clock meeting tonight to consider a motion to adopt the final budget for fiscal year 25. And this uh, clarifies that those holding accounts that you discussed in your previous budget work session on RDA would come back to the board for final approval. That's the only clarification that we've made and we haven't heard any other questions from board members. Mr. Chair, I just want to say thank you to council staff and RDA staff for helping us get to this point in our budget season. I agree, thank you. Um, okay, moving on now to item number seven, a report announcement from the executive director. I don't see, I see him coming in, but no, uh, stuff from the executive director. I, um, from RDA staff, any uh, updates? Yes, Mr. Chair, we have one update with six parts. So bear with me, please. And again, thank um, you for sending those ahead. That helps oh, a lot. Thank you. Uh, hope that helps and let us know if there's anything we can do different with that. Um, going through this, our one update is speaking to um, staff and specifically uh, our staffing update looks like a citywide game of musical chairs. But if you'll bear with me, I'm gonna go through a few of those with you right now. First off, last month, uh, our office facilitator, Felina Lazald, took a promotion with the Economic Development Department. She was with the agency for three years and with the city prior to that, um, we, where she uh, helped us quite a bit in our admin and support functions, as well as uh, helping our property manager with his activities. Um, so lucky for us when we're back in the building, she's just across the hall from us, so we still get to see her and, and have her positive attitude, but uh, we we're happy that she was able to take that promotion. In her place, we have hired Megan Fenton, who started yesterday. Um, she comes with, to us with a background in administrative role with a law firm that is specialized in housing, so she's familiar with that in terms of one of our core functions. Um, as I said, we're not in the office right now, so it's an interesting time to hire an office facilitator when we're over at the shop. Um, but we look forward to her jumping in and helping us get settled when we're back in the building uh, and our portion of the earthquake repairs are done. Uh, turning to the project staff, we're pleased to announce that we've hired Brone Seabright. He comes to us from Park City, where he was part of their municipal housing team. Um, he has a passion and work for local government, also working uh, for Bountiful City in planning and code enforcement, um, and has his master's degree in city and regional planning from Pratt Institute. So we're excited to have his experience coming to the team. You may also recognize behind me Wayne Mills. He has joined RDA as a senior project manager. If you don't recognize him, it's because his shirt is tucked in today. Um, it's only his second day and he somehow still thinks we don't know who he is. but. Uh, we're happy to have him. Uh, you're familiar with, with Wayne, uh, 23 years of planning, previous work with Envision Utah, even dabbled with the Downtown Alliance early in his career. So in total, he has over 30 years of experience in Salt Lake City specific uh, activities. So, um, and then keeping with our project staff, sorry, I have to, my notes went, went away for a second. Um, so I'm gonna wing this one because apparently it's not showing. Oh, there we go. Um, Lucas Goodrich, if you know Lucas, he's been with the agency on our project staff for the past year and a half. He has been hired to become the new director for the Gallivan Center. Um, Lucas has two decades of background in performing arts as an artist, an educator, and a pro producer. Um, he's also, we're sad to lose our only doctorate on staff. We like calling him Dr. Goodrich, but um, <laughs> we're happy to have him still under the agency umbrella. Excited to see him uh, switch over to the Gallivan Center role. And then um, lastly, our communication manager, Amanda Greenland, is ending her nine-year tenure with the agency. She is taking her talents over to the city's public affairs, uh, to be the city public affairs manager with the IMS department. Um, so uh, if you know Amanda, you know this is a tough loss for us in terms of um, her background and her support of myself, the rest of the staff, and the agency as a whole. Um, that's, that's all I can say right now without starting to get emotional as much as we're gonna miss her. We're glad to have her still within the city and we'll obviously still be able to, to contact and, and utilize her talents um, for communication within that capacity. And we're excited and think the city got a great, great employee with Amanda. So that is all I have, Mr. Chair, and happy to answer any questions. 
That's a, that's a, that's certainly a lot of musical. That's chairs. a lot of movement. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I uh, I also thank uh, uh, you know Amanda for the, the many years of service uh, and, and work with the RDA. Um, I is there any other thoughts, Mr. Chair? Yes. I'll just say welcome to Brown. Good to have you on board. <laughs> Okay, let's, let's move on now to uh, number uh, item number nine. There's no reports from me. Mr. Chair, do you have any reports? Uh, I do not, Mr. Chair. There is, there is a written briefing, um, so please uh, check your packets. Uh, it's uh, item D1 for you to read. It's a predisposition and lease selection, selection report for property assemblage uh, 310 South, 500 West at the Rio Grande District. Um, there is no consent agenda for, for today, so we uh, are going to adjourn the RDA meeting and we're going to reconvene at 2.30, please. We're going to reconvene at 2.30, so we almost have 30 minutes, so 28 minutes. Thank you, everyone.